Her name is Amy. You better watch out. She'll come get you. Good morning, everybody. It is day two here in Vienna. Kind of a late start today, but still getting used to the time change. Sorry if it's still really windy. There's still a wind warning here. But uh, got a big day today. We're gonna go try and see a bunch of cool stuff, but just wanted to say good morning. So good morning. Good morning. Because we got up so late, we're not really sure how much we're actually gonna be able to get done. We had a huge slate today, but I don't think we're gonna get to all of it. But what are you thinking for the first stop? I'm between Beethoven's grave and the Schönbrunn Palace. Which one are you thinking? Thinking palace. Palace it is. We're going to the Schönbrunn Palace first. Probably not gonna be able to get in because it's like 40 euros to get in. So we're just gonna explore the grounds. Yeah, we just aren't, aren't like that into palaces. You know what I mean? Like we wanna see the grounds, but we don't really wanna go inside. Yeah, they get a little old kind of quick. It's just opulence everywhere, which is cool, but it's only cool for a little while, you know. We don't think it's really worth 40 euro, so we're just gonna explore the uh, explore the grounds. Walking back up the escalator. Amy dished me. Had to run back up the escalator. I'm just trying to see how to get to the genre. Without this one right here, my entire life would be lost. I just, <laughs> I just follow this blue coat. Follow the blue. That's how I, I'm an expert navigator because I just follow a little blue coat and red hair around Vienna. like fell in love with about Austria other than like how it looks everything is so efficient yeah. the metro is crazy efficient even like the crosswalks they go quick like yeah you, there's no just like lag time there's no waiting around like you get in a metro station and if it's not there it's gonna be there in like two minutes right right you don't have to wait at all it's just like those little things they're just all over this city these like little things that make just this, a huge difference once you start noticing them so I'm just gonna keep doting on Vienna. This is one of the, this is one of my favorite places I've ever been, honestly. Oh yeah, me too. It's one of like the best cities I've ever been to in Europe. I'd say it's like maybe my second favorite after Paris. I do really like Barcelona. I don't know, it's up there though. We've got some more to explore before making that determination, but super cool. So we are right here, that big giant palace I just showed is right here, and the palace complex is all this still. Basically behind this are just like acres and acres of just lavish gardens and beautiful stuff. Pretty cool, Crack, what do you think? Yeah, it's really cool. So apparently, I think if I remember correctly, this is was the royal family's summer palace. So this is where they would live in summertime. It's their summer home. It's summer. Honestly, a little unimpressive. Come on, royal family, step your, step your summer home game up. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, this is amazingly opulent. door is of the palace and we're gonna try and see if we can get around to the back where like the giant complex the garden comp complex is without paying I doubt it but I read that the grounds are free we want to get back to the Gloriette which is like this other I think little palace angel <laughs> in the back of the like complex it's the little palace within the palace that's on the palace grounds that's what we're looking for <laughs> the palace within the palace, within the palace. Yeah. <laughs> like i can't imagine living here like it's crazy to think at one point someone they didn't even live here this was their summer home
right, we were successful. We were able to get to the back of the palace. Well, I think this is the side of the palace, actually, Greg. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get all the way back or not, but the, the grounds are free. I know that, so it's just not free to get into the palace itself. Okay, now this right here, this is the side of the palace, and then it wraps around to the back of the palace right here. And I think this is like the start of the gardens. Just like, look at these statues. It's incredible. This right here, over my shoulder, back in the States, would literally be in a museum. Here, you can just walk right up and touch it if you want to. And there's probably 20 of those. It's really incredible. Everything's not in bloom right now, but you can tell too, I mean, the, the care that they take for this place is just insane. Everything's trimmed to a T and just neat as a pin. The other thing that's really nice, so Amy and I are obviously here in February and as beautiful as this place would be, totally bloomed and everything, it's really cool like being able to really walk around because the crowds are so low because it's a little chilly. But I can imagine what it would be at the bloom, but this is pretty cool walking around with not many people, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You can see the gardens are like ripped up right now just because I'm sure they're just, you know, letting them rest in the winter season. So the statues I was talking about that would be in a museum in the United States, we're here at this complex. I'm going to count them. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. There are twenty-three of those statues just hanging out, totally made of marble, and just incredibly beautiful. And you can literally just walk right up to them and touch them. So what Amy was talking about when she said all the flower beds are kind of ripped up, she's talking about this. They're just prepping everything for next year it looks like so what is that thing up there called name the gloriette the gloriette all right let's go check it out really there's these signs though everywhere telling you not to do something but i don't know what we're not supposed to be doing it makes it hard to not know what to do when it's in Deutsch. Okay, so this is like up around the fountain. We want to go into the little like cave looking section. So here it is, here's the entrance. Obviously it is locked, unfortunately, but you can still kind of get a good view out of what it would be like. It is very obviously like Poseidon and water themed. Yeah. There's like shells everywhere. Poseidon is like right above me right now. Like this guy right here, you can clearly see he is like half mermaid. His right leg is like half mermaid. That horse has a fish tail. And then there's the big daddy Poseidon up there. So Obviously, the family who built it wanted to pay tribute or respect or just like the water to, uh, you know, some of like the water gods. So that's pretty cool. Didn't expect that. Now we're heading even farther up the hill to... The Gloriette. We're gonna head up the hill now, doing a little hike up to the Gloriette and we'll get a bird's eye view of the palace from the top of the hill. Woo! All right, there it is. Heck, what are we looking at? The Gloriette. Okay, so what is the significance of the Gloriette? The kings and queens would come up from the palace to do their daily exercise ritual here. <laughs> and have parties up here. Apparently, the king, he just couldn't help himself. He loved sledding so much that ever since he died, they banned it in his honor. Totally kidding, kidding, obviously. It was probably banned because some idiot like me got a sled up here once and had the time of his life and then they banned it. So that's probably what happened. Imagine sledding down these hills. Palace in the background. All I'm saying, sledding would be super fun.
Did you film any of that? No. Oh, well, we got our picture taken uh, by a... Uh, you see, he was a nice Italian man, but there was a definite communication breakdown on what kind of pictures he wanted. And he took some pictures of us on his phone and then was explaining to us how he, how he, he kept taking them like crooked and stuff. And uh, <laughs> he was saying that's what he wanted and I don't think I did a very good job. He seemed very dissatisfied with my camera work. So I'll show you the pictures right here. Pretty interesting with the, with the angles, but it was like a 20 minute language barrier debacle. But now we're finally up to where we wanted to get to this thing of beauty. There's people in there. And it turns out the inside is a freaking restaurant. Do you wanna go get a beer in there? Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah, never mind. We decided to skip that. The Gloriette is a restaurant inside, but it's gonna take way too long to get a beer. And if we go get a beer there, we'll miss out on Beethoven's Grave, and we really wanna see Beethoven's Grave, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that would be cool in there, but I just know it'll probably be really expensive. And I don't know how long it's gonna take. All right, we have made it back to the palace there and now we're gonna get on out of here go to the metro and try and see Beethoven's grave see if it's haunted with any piano music I'm actually more or less impressed than you thought I am overall more impressed the buildings are about what I expected but I just can't believe how big the grounds are that's the thing that's kind of throwing me off it's like it is huge it took us to walk from here up to there. It took us what, probably 35 minutes? Mm. Maybe 30? 20. 20? The complex is just like incredible, incredibly beautiful, so opulent. I can't believe how interactive you can be, but the palace and everything looks about how I thought it would. The grounds are what is really impressive to me. So overall, super cool, super impressed. Very happy we came. Pretty hungry. We were on the fence about mm. going to Beethoven's grave or not, but we decided yes because I don't know. We're when, here. Right. When will we ever see it? And I think that's a pretty cool thing to see. I think it's pretty cool too. But we were between that and just getting food and kind of calling it a day. But we were like, no, we're here. We're gonna go do it. Yeah. just left simmering where we need and I've been bragging about how quick the trains are so I set a timer we're gonna see how quick a train actually gets here from like right when another one leaves I think I hear the next train two minutes and 15 seconds so it takes two minutes and 15 seconds for another train to get here there's one every like two minutes it's nuts some absolute just like bumped Amy coming off of the train and... It was like harmless, but I no, just not understand it. <laughs> I refrained just because we're in a foreign country. Don't want to be getting thrown in jail for me fighting some old guy. <laughs> um, but we think what happened was he was trying to maybe pickpocket and that's why he like pushed to distract. So that's just another reason, you know, wherever you go, just... In any country, in the United States, Europe, whatever, there's a lot of pickpockets. So just be mindful of your stuff. Wear clothes with like zippers and stuff. All right, so we just got to the end of the U3 line. I'm still irritated at that who checked Amy. But we're at the end of the line and now we're trying to figure out how to get connected to the train that takes us further outside the city. Ready to see Beethoven crackage? Yes. We're coming for you, Ludwig. Amy read, yeah. Amy read that the trip out on the trains and the, the metro and stuff takes 40 minutes. 
That was nowhere near 40 minutes. No, I had read something else that said 20, and 20 is way more real. Like, I think 20 is correct. From like the city center, about 20 minutes. But yeah, the train system, I mean, as I showed earlier, it only takes like two minutes for a train to come. And if like, there's no one at the stop, the doors will just close like immediately. It's crazy how fast and efficient everything works. So it only takes about 20 minutes to get out here. So far, it's beautiful. This graveyard's enormous. I haven't seen any graves yet, but it's literally like four stops along the train long. So it's huge. What do you think so far, Crack? It's beautiful. It's huge, like Marshall was saying. So I specifically looked up get off on Zentralfriedhof 2 to get to Beethoven's grave the fastest. Very cool. Okay, so we just found, found kind of a a map of like who's buried here and we're just kind of taking a look at it and obviously there's three names that really like pop off and first is Beethoven, the reason we're here. Obviously Mozart, everybody knows who that is. Who's Schubert, Greg? He's another famous composer. composer I think. Really? It's crazy, two of the greatest composers of all time are just buried right here. Isn't that kind of wild? It is. Here it is. Beethoven. Got a little harp as his emblem up there. That's cool. Then right here. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And we got from Franz Schubert. Obviously the harp is prevalent here too. You got the harp right there. She's holding a harp right there. Very cool. I don't think there's a harp on Mozart though. Oh no, yeah there is. She's holding one, the statue's holding the harp. I'm thinking because of the prevalence of the harp, the harp has to mean like, that's like the symbol of the musician, right? It's gotta be. Something like that. They're all holding like the same harp. Super beautiful. So, so cool. It was way easier to find than I expected. Like way easier. Like you literally just get off the tram, walk right here and you're there. Just like the palace, I will definitely say, pretty worth it to come out here. This is really cool. It's funny because the, the the composer's um, gravestones and like monuments, they're nowhere near the most extravagant here, but they're probably the three most famous people in this cemetery. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. You wanna do some more, you wanna walk around a little bit more? Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. to comment what you think this is before we reveal it do you think that building is a church a mausoleum for somebody that's what Amy said or just like common area for the cemetery let me see what your thoughts are I think it's a church you got the, the cross up top it just has everything it just makes sense to have a church on cemetery grounds to me but there were some very wealthy people here. Very well could be a mausoleum for like royals or something. I don't know. If that's a mausoleum, I'll flip. I still don't know what it is yet. <laughs> we gotta walk up to it. It's 100% a church. It is? I can see pews and like an altar. Church. For those of you who commented church, you are a winner winner chicken dinner. Your prize is pride. Do the rocky up here. Yeah. Now we're off to warm up and get some food. They're very tiny, as you can see. And he's got a beer. Got some water. What did we order, him? 
We got Wiener Schnitzel and Marsh got like some suckling pig or something like that, right Marsh? Yep, it's like crispy suckling pig, so and give it a try. We kind of saved up our money today to have a nicer dinner, so it's gonna be nice. This place is definitely fancier than I thought it was gonna be. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, it's gonna be delicious. Okay, so we've got some, this is the Wiener Schnitzel. I'm gonna try a little bit of it. And this is suckling pig with uh, bacon foam and some other vegetables and stuff. Looks very good, right? Yes. And what's, okay, how's the Wiener Schnitzel? Mm, really tender. Mm. Crispy because it's fried. What is it, what are these? Potatoes. Really? What's and the jam? Cranberry sauce. Mm. So all of that's pretty traditional, I think. Mm. So good. I'm a little nervous. This piece of meat seems extremely tender. I'm just like feeling it. It looks amazing. And it feels fatty, kind of. Just stab it, lovey. Okay, here he goes. Finally. I can't. Good Lord Almighty. <laughs> okay, finally. Here we go. Mm. Good. Super flavorful. The crust on the outside is really good. It's super tender meat. It's a little fatty for my taste, just a little bit. But so super good. This sauce right here is amazing. The peas are great. Let me try one of the gnocchis. Mm. I still say gnocchi is a little overrated, but it's good. <laughs> Very good. After savoring the first few bites, we couldn't hold back the hunger any longer and proceeded to devour our food in record time. We left the restaurant full and happy.